Um, so my 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 uh, subject is the, is the Eucharist, isn't it? And, and it's it's a, with the possibility of looking towards an exhibition that may be around the theme of of Adoramus, which is the uh, the pastoral convention in, in Liverpool. That's I've got, I've got that right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now um, I've uh, so a few thoughts I've put together here. Um, I suppose I'm presuming that you you you've, you're all familiar with the Catholic tradition. But if if there's any word that I use or a phrase or something, and you want to interject and ask a question, don't don't mind. Or we'll, we'll, that might help us to. So uh, feel free to to, uh, <coughs> to ask or interrupt on, on the way through. But then, if, as, as Alice said, we will perhaps have a short time afterwards for just um, any clarification but basically we'll, we'll, we'll keep the discussion to a little bit later yeah? okay. okay so I've, I've written up here the Eucharist and I've said we use the word Eucharist for what we commonly refer to as the Mass um, and the, 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 the Mass as we would know it today would be a short introduction which is the penance Right. Then we go into what will be the liturgy of the word, um, which will be the readings and homily, and then what we would call then the liturgy of the Eucharist, um, which would be very much to do with with the, the, the taking of the, the the species of the bread and wine <coughs> and saying the prayers over them, and that we would understand that they would be then become the, the body and blood of Jesus. And then there will be the, the, the communion, and then there will be the sort of uh, conclusion, right? So the, the central part of, of the celebration of the Eucharist <coughs> is, is, is the, the liturgy of the Word and the liturgy of the Eucharist. And it's often been said that there are two tables. Um, and the first table is the lectern on which the book is placed, where we open the Word. And we could even say we break open the Word. Uh, 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 in the sense that we, we hear it, we listen to it, we, we try and understand it, and very often we have some reflection or homily that would, would, as it were, break open the word, try and make the word alive and, and um, bring out the, the, the meaning that's there. And then the, the second table would be the table of, of the, um, the Eucharist, which... We, we tend to call an altar, although often in, in Latin it is, is referred to as the mensa. Um, uh, and then that's where we break the bread, which is the old phrase, going back to the, the Acts of the Apostles for, for the celebration of the Eucharist. So we have the table of the Word, table of the Eucharist, and we break the Word, we break the bread. So there's a sort of a... Um, or a simple, a sort of yeah, balance there between between the two parts, and I, I think when I was just thinking about this, I was very conscious. Um, I, I suppose of when um, going back to when I was when I was a kid. I, um, see, I I'm, I'm seventy now, so um, I, I would have started serving mass when I was about six. And at that time, of course, the, the, the whole of the, the Mass, as we knew it, was in, was in Latin. And in order to serve Mass, we had to learn Latin phrases in order to respond to the priest. And uh, <coughs> are there many that would remember the old Latin Mass? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, the, the, the point about it was that the priest said everything in Latin, um, and his back was to the people. Um, and uh, if you ever see the old Roman chasubles, the, the, the back of the chasuble is beautifully decorated, uh, and the front looks a bit odd. So if you if you use a Roman <laughs> uh, chasuble today, which is the over the overgarment that the priest wears, it looks very odd from the front because because it's not it's not really made to be looked at. Uh, but and so what 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 happened really was was that the the the, the council happened. The, the, this was, um, if you remember again, was, was called by Pope John the Twenty Third, um, and it happened between 1963 and 1966. There were four, four uh, sessions, 
and and John himself only only lasted one session, um, and uh, um, and the only thing that got through the first session was was the the document on the liturgy called Sacrosanctum Concilium, this Holy Council. They the, all these documents have a they always use the first two Latin <laughs> words uh, for for as a, as a shorthand of, of which document it was, um, and. So, to, like, the, I think it was yeah, 60, uh, 64, sort of Easter time, John died, um, and uh, Paul VI was elected. And, and one of the first things he had to decide as the new pope was would the, would the council continue? And, and it, it did. I mean, he, he made that decision and it did, and it, and it finished his work. And th this book, um, what did I work out? There are. They issued uh, 16 documents uh, from the council, um, but a lot of them are only decrees and, and declarations. But there were four documents that, that, that are known as constitutions. Two, two of them are dogmatic constitutions, which means I suppose they're as close as you can get to, to the, the church speaking its mind in, in a very <coughs> serious way. Um, and uh, that one would be... Uh, the church, the document on the church known as Lumen Gentium, and the other one is on, on, the, on scripture, sacred scripture, uh, um, Dei Verbum, the word of God. And then there's a pastoral constitution, again on the church. Um, during the course of the, the council, there was a lot of interventions about who and what the church is and how it works and, and how it should be seen. And, and um, the initial document, I think, is looking at the church Lumen Gentium, how, how we see ourselves working inside ourselves. And then I, I think with a lot of the other interventions, they, they said, well, well, we'll have a pastoral constitution on the church, is, is how the church sort of speaks more widely. And that, that, but that became known as, as Gaudium at Spes, joy, joy and hope. And it was how the church would try to portray itself beyond itself. But the only other constitution is is the constitution on the liturgy, and that was, as I say, that was the only that was the first um, document that got passed, um, and uh, that was the only one that emerged from that very very first session. All the others were, were looked at and discussed, and most of them were not thrown out, but they they were sent back for revision. But the the, the, the document on the constitution uh, constitution on the liturgy um, passed through in, in that first. Uh, session and and uh, I, I think it was uh, that, that it was signed up, up on the, the December fourth yeah, of December nineteen sixty three. So as of this year, it will be fifty five years old, uh, um, which is a long time. But in in in, uh, in many ways, I suppose anybody that's known the church over that period would, in in some way, that's that's the bit that's. That we we've, we've noticed of a of a change, um, and I suppose the biggest change would be that uh, we we went from Latin to to vernacular, uh, so the different languages in the different places, um, and even I think in, when you read the document, they they weren't sure at that point whether whether the whole language would would change or only parts of it, but uh, it, it became very clear that sort of fairly early on that, that, that the, the local language would be the language that would be used for, for, for prayer. Um, the, the, one of the other things that changed quite dramatically was the use of scripture. Um, and uh, um, we, we now have a, the, the, the book that we use for the readings is known as the lectionary. And it, I mean, it's we're now all very familiar that the first reading is from the Old Testament, the second reading from the New Testament, and the third reading is the Gospel. But back in those days there was only two readings, and the first reading was generally referred to as the Epistle, and it very often was from the Epistles. And so the use of the Old Testament was, was very rare in, in, in Sunday liturgy. Uh, it, it came crept into some of the weekdays, but again, not, not very often. And sometimes if there was... a uh, a, a saint's day, which was a, conf a con he was known as a confessor, somebody that confessed the faith. We'd have the same set of readings every day, for <laughs> which was, uh, to say the least, a bit boring. <laughs> but, uh, 
But we have an enormously rich fare of, of uh, readings now that were, that were never there, um, certainly, um, between the Council of Trent and, and, and the Second Vatican Council. So that, that was a, an enormous change in, in the, that first part of the liturgy of, of the word.